It's the month of love. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Since it's February and almost Valentine's Day and I don't know, maybe you're gonna see this in Valentine's Day or maybe not. I thought I'm going to share some booksies with you, some romantic booksies that I read recently and love. Well, some I read recently and some I read last year. But since I know for a fact that we are all lonely, I do not know that for a fact. I am assuming because I am in fact lonely as fuck. And I do not want to feel alone in being lonely. <laughs> and what a better way to spend Valentine's Day when you're alone than reading romance and feeling jealous of everything that's happening because you can't have it. That was a personal attack on myself from myself. <laughs> Sometimes I, I get I get lonely, I'm not gonna lie, and sad. I'm already a little sad mentally and I get lonelier on Valentine's Day. So I'm just I just make a cup of hot chocolate, lay down and read some romance and it really helps. Like it takes my mind out of it until I finish, then I start crying and then I think I'll call my ex and tell him, why can't we have this? But we're not gonna do that. That was too much. Starting up strong with a book that I've been recommending over and over and over again since the goddamn day I've read it, and that is Archer's Voice by Mia. I'm so sorry, I still cannot say your last name. This book lives rent fucking free in my heart, in my brain. This character, like Archer, Archer Hale is, he is the moment. He is, he is, yes. Sometimes I get confused with my sexuality and then I read about someone like Archer Hale and I'm like, yeah, no, I, we like tacos and we like, we like everything. <laughs> Yeah, Archer really has my entire goddamn heart. Plus, he is mute. He is a person that cannot speak. And that is absolutely amazing. And I've been looking for more and more characters that are deaf or, deaf or mute since I've read the book. And I still haven't found anything that satisfied me because it's a representation that we don't see often. And my limited knowledge of books, it's a representation that we don't see often. And it's a book that doesn't revolve around well, it kind of does it's I literally called archer's voice while well, the fucking man doesn't have a voice but that was so mean but it doesn't revolve around this story of a man being mute it's just something else it's romance it's him finding love and loving himself for the first time and it was amazing and it inspired me so much to learn sign language i don't have any notes because i want to speak from the heart and i am and this book lives in there rent free like my man if you ever want to date me you're gonna have to compete with archers let's go read this book write down on a menu what he does and then come and do it literally <laughs> oh my god that was a little presumptuous of you. Brie moves in into this new hometown after she has a terrible, terrible time in her old town and then she meets Archer and we get to know his side of the story and what made him lose his voice and it's heart, heart well, man, and it made me sob. I promise there will be a happy ending. Not to spoil, but there will be a happy ending. Yeah, it's... I wish I can read this again, especially on fucking Valentine's I wish I can erase my memory every fucking Valentine's Day so I can read this book again. It was amazing and I would 100% recommend it, obviously. <laughs> Next up is also a book you're not gonna see in romance recommendations, but it is To Kill a Kingdom. So why is this recommended here when it's almost pure fantasy? Because the romance between Lyra and I literally forgot his name is so cute. Lyra is a mermaid, right? It's a retelling of the Little Mermaid and Lyra is a mermaid and she is feared by humans and always wanted to be, like tried to be, not her, humans always wanted to hunt her down, like she's the ultimate prize, the ultimate catch if you will. Ilian, his name is Ilian, sorry my brain is stupid. <laughs> and then we have Ilian. First of all, I love the representation, I love the resemblance of Egyptian culture i liked it i liked that so much it was a bit too much actually but i still enjoyed it because again it's not something that i see a lot without it being fucking racist <laughs> this was so cool i loved it so much every time i read something about like the hints to an arab culture i'm just like my heart gets filled with so much happiness and then they crush it down with making it super fucking racist and i i just yes this didn't feel like that i actually really enjoyed it 
But you know the drill, they meet somehow, and I'm not gonna spoil how, and yeah, a lot. We have forced proximity, we have a lion trope, someone is hiding things from the other, and like the entire story, I was yelling at the fucking book, just fucking kiss. Like, I could not find anything wrong with this book. I think I rated 4.5 stars, or 5, and yeah, I had a really, 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 really good time. And like, the main focus for me, it was a lot going on, but for me, I could not get over the romance, and and like the vibe between them it's definitely a book that like i sat down and i was like what do i want to read right now if i didn't read anything and these archer's voice the Kelly kingdom popped up immediately in my head and i wish i could read them again <laughs> next up we have a coho book shocking <laughs> we have november 9 by colleen hoover i recently read this if you want like a full in-depth uh thing about like i did the made an entire vlog where i go in depth in the details but the romance aspect in that did held its own and it's still cute and when i was like thinking about this video it still got into my brain it still invaded itself into my thoughts so it means that it's still cute the premise was a little bit off it's not gonna be a book enjoyed by everyone but the romance was so freaking cute and i, I just thought it was rooting for them i love Fallon again representation bro my body is a fucking scar fest to be able to have that Fallon has this huge fucking scar on her face right and she's like so beautiful and like we discovered this journey with her learning to love herself again the plot twist I did not see fucking coming okay I didn't see it coming and you will not too but yeah it was Fallon for me like the journey of her discovering herself again and falling in love with herself and her scars and the romance it was so cute <laughs> Next up we have Go Around. This was a huge highlight of last year. My, my sapphic, my queer 14 year old ass would have swallowed this up. I would have, if I read this when I was 14 or something, bro, I would have 15 tattoos relating to this book. When I read it, I could not fucking wait for other people to read it. You don't fucking understand. I'm fucking crying. I don't know why I'm fucking crying. Why do I cry always when I film? Romeo Scott is following a huge movie star and uh, somehow she meets someone who ends up being her protector. This is a fantasy and it does include werewolves and magic and I rarely push a werewolf book and I push in this one because I loved it so much. The romance, oh my god, it was fucking yelling. There was forced proximity and there was an obvious crush and you don't like... There was like the underdog type of trope, if you know what I mean. I don't know what to call that trope. Like, I'm an underdog. They, they could never have a crush on me. Look at them. Like, they're this movie star or whatever. And then they obviously have a huge crush on them. Like, she literally wants to sleep with you. Like, literally. She's telling... Not gonna spoil. Uh, yes. Cute romance. <laughs> Next up is a book that I read recently and already talked about it about 75 times and that is Go Around by Ichi Noe. It's not gonna take long explaining this one again, but also made a vlog for reading it. But it's following Elise and Avery and one is a movie star, one is an air marshal and they meet in a hot situation, hot situation and forced proximity, my dude. Forced proximity always ends with someone's tongue inside someone's taco and i love it i'm here for it i'm i love it this was the cutest the cutest this had the potential to go up to archer's level it had the potential to go up to archer's level and i i don't know how i feel about that because archer is literally my fucking baby but yeah i it's like this wasn't i want archer this wasn't i want this fucking character to become alive this was i want these two people to live forever and always love each other it was like that kind of cute next up is such a beautiful obvious choice and that's the song of achilles bro the romance Ah, and first of all, I want to ask you something. Am I the only person that read this and thought they had a happy ending? Because I thought the ending was happy. I, I wasn't sad. I didn't cry, but I wasn't sad at the ending. I thought, oh, like, it's it's happy. Like, they're together or whatever. <laughs> I mean, they ended up together. If you want to read this, like, looking for the romance aspect, there's so much more. There is a literal fucking 10-year war but I had to include it. How can you talk about romance and not include Achilles and Patroclus? You crazy? You cannot do that. 
You literally cannot. You are not allowed to do that. So, yes, I, 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 obvious contender in this in this genre. Obvious. It's a, it's a, it's it's in the moment. Look at it. Following the story of Achilles from the POV of Patroclus, who ends up being his roommate. <laughs> All throughout the 10 year old war of Troy and to the ending and despite all of that like it's I cannot like I feel stupid sitting here and telling you the writing is so beautiful and poetic yes it fucking it, oh my god it is it's worth every hype it got if it's worth every hyped up review every hyped up every five star it got it's worth it i loved it and it was one of the most beautiful books that i've ever read in my life and that i will ever read in my life and it's always going to remain and it's going to be 100 percent a classic one day as if it's already not is a cult followed book and i am in that cult <laughs> last book that i want to share with you that are filled with romance and smut is for you if you are a dark romance reader this is a lot that we gave historical we gave contemporary, we gave, we gave, what do we gave? What did we give? We gave teenage, like young love in November 9, and now we're going dark romance. So I'm covering all the genres. I didn't realize that I'm doing that, but I'm gonna pretend like I did. Planned everything like this. Picked up, we have a trilogy, and it is the Prince Charming trilogy, compiled of three books. Stroke of Midnight, Prince Charming, and The Glass Slipper. This was such an unexpected find for me because I found it and I got it and then I finished it in a day, the first one, and I didn't realize it was trilogy and it is and it ends on a cliffhanger, so keep that in mind, it ends on a cliffhanger. And I ended up getting all of them and I loved every fucking moment. It's a dark romance, it's obviously like a retelling of Cinderella and it's a very contemporary retelling of Cinderella. A very, very contemporary Cinderella retelling. When she meets him, she's a maid, obviously, and he's this huge thing. And they, they end up making a bet where he gets to do things, exclusive things, and pay her. And it turns out to something like I've started with it and I was just like, okay, cool, yeah, it is gonna end and I'm not gonna remember this. And it ended up being one of the most memorable stories and I loved it so much. The romance between them, like it developed. It was the development in the writing for me personally. Like it developed into something huge and into something super cute and into like from this one dark romance book or one like retelling dark romance book which we see so much of like retellings that are just filled with smut and you just read them to have fun in between books actually like a filler and personally i do that i'm sorry if you don't i did not expect it to develop into an actual romance an actual book that i really will have me grabbed by the fucking balls it would it had me on my toes it had me like oh my god clutching my pearls it had me so worried about everyone and the ending of book two the ending of book two was a mess not in a bad way but oh my god you don't understand i had when i finished it i was like like page after page after page after page and then i immediately started the third book and until i like rested until i was like oh my god yes they're okay they're talking they're fine everything is fine point is i could not rest until I knew that everyone was fine and okay and are with each other because I couldn't see anyone else like with everyone else. Obviously check the trigger warning for this one. Fuck it, check the trigger warnings for all of them. But yeah, I hope these keep you company. I literally gave you every genre that I could think of that I had. <laughs> and I hope you can find one of them that will fill your lonely ass on Valentine's Day. That sounds inappropriate and I meant it to sound inappropriate. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll see you next video. Bye. <laughs>